Today on Fight and Revive, we're going to do something that I was not expecting to do again so soon. Just a couple weeks ago, I uploaded my second of the year uh, presidential electoral map prediction. And well, here we are again just a couple weeks later. A lot has happened. Trump has had a the docs case dismissed against him. He's picked his vice president. And of course, I think there was something. Oh yeah, he almost got killed. So yeah, I felt it was like it was worth maybe doing another electoral map prediction. So here we go. Buckle up for this special midweek special of Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. So I'm going to keep this brief, but I do have a couple notes before we get started, and that is number one. I'm going to tell you something I don't think I've ever told you on the channel before, which is just to remind you that the podcast is also available on all audio podcast platforms. It's not as popular as it is on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, YouTube is more my jam, personally, but uh, podcasts are available. It is uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Amazon Music, uh, not on Google Podcasts because they just shut down, I believe, but... Um, yeah, it's available out there, so I like listening to podcasts when I'm at work, um, on Spotify, and when I'm watching videos, I choose YouTube, but, you know, watch however you want, but I just wanted to let you know. Secondly, uh, the flag. I've been asked about that. Uh, when is that coming down? And the answer is, I don't know. Uh, as you'll note, you may notice, I just updated the channel banner. It was that same kind of, uh, didn't look so great channel banner for a while. It was kind of pixelated, and it was DeSantis, Trump, and Biden. So I have updated it. It looks a little bit better now, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, you probably notice that now. So um, yeah, obviously, you know, I'm saying DeSantis 2028, but you know, that is going to come down at some point. I just don't have a better backdrop for it at the moment. So for now, uh, my studio background remains the same. Okay, let's get into the video. Today we are going to use 538. In my first video, we used a uh, real, real, real. I'm, I nearly got it on the first try. I nearly got uh, rear, real, clear politics. There it is, folks. I got it. Real, clear politics. We use their poll at polling average or real, clear polling, I guess I should say. We use their polling average in the first video. In the second video, we use DDHQ and the Hill. Today, we're going to use 538. And now we've got we've done all of the big three in terms of their polling averages. Hello folks, don't let me bother you. I will not keep you long. Sorry to interrupt you already in this video, but I just want to remind you, new viewers, real quick to subscribe. Help us reach more people with our conservative message here on YouTube. And then, let me see here. Oh yes, our margins for today. As you see right here, uh, tilt is going to be 0.1 to 1.5%. Lean will be 1.6 to 4%. Likely 4.1 to 8.9%. Safe 9% and up. So uh, kind of a little bit uh, more expansive. I gave a little more wiggle room uh, in the past video. I don't remember what I did in the first video exactly, but in the second video, which was the last one in terms of the presidential electoral map prediction, I, um, I didn't give myself much wiggle room. I kind of kept the margins pretty tight. So we're going to have a little bit more wiggle room now. And as you see there, right here we have and toss up, and that's for a reason. That's because... I am allowing myself toss-ups now. In the first two videos, I did not allow myself toss-ups. I would tell you if I thought a state was pretty much a toss-up, but I forced myself to make a prediction tilt one way or the other. And so I am, in this one, going to officially allow myself as toss-ups. If I think it could tilt, or if I think, you know, it might tilt, but I feel better as a toss-up, I'll let you know. But anyway, let's get into it. Over here, you'll also note we're using a new map uh, simulator today, I guess you can call it. Okay, we're going to start off here. And if this looks familiar to you, you can uh, credit Mr. Red Eagle Politics. This is where I, that's where I found this one. So thank you to him for the, uh, you know, for helping me find this, uh, inadvertently, helping me find this map. So let's start with our safe Republican states. We've got Alaska, Texas, and Florida. Those are two big ones, obviously. I believe they're both going to be safe. In the southeast, we've got Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, moving up, I believe Ohio is going to be safe. Uh, Indiana is going to be safe. Missouri, Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Nebraska's fir uh, first and third congressional district, as well as the state as a whole. Uh, Kansas, Oklahoma, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, uh, Utah, and whoops, not Nevada. Let me go there. Okay. So we are at 205. Let me make sure I didn't miss. Ah, I've missed West Virginia before. Didn't miss it this time. South Carolina, missed it before. Didn't miss it this time. And that should do it. Um, historically, in these videos, I end up 
doing something really stupid, like I'll put uh, New York as red or something, and I don't realize it for a little bit, so it looks weird on the screen. But I think I've covered all the safe Republican states at this point. Uh, yes, I believe it looks good. Let's move on to our safe blue. Democrat, we've got California, the friend of land of fruits and nuts, but mostly just nuts. Oregon and Washington, you can make an argument. Those are going to be within nine points specifically. Uh, I mean, I've heard opinions on both. I've heard Washington specifically more so. You can make an argument they're not going to be safe, but I'm going to say nine points are better in all three of those states. Hawaii as well. That's the West Coast. East Coast, we've got Maine's first congressional district, but that's it. You've got uh, not New Hampshire. Sorry, let me get out of that. New Hampshire is not going to be there. Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, yes, I believe is going to be safe. New Jersey, also believe is going to be safe. Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. as well. And the state of Illinois could be a little bit closer than usual. I'm going to say it's still nine points or over, but I can see an argument for that being a likely state. And with that, that leaves us with Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, Maine, 2nd Congressional District, the state as a whole, and Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District as well. Oh, I forgot. Aha, I didn't miss it though too long. Uh, Maine, 2nd Congressional District will be safe red as well. We're going to talk more about that later. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, let's talk more about that now. I like to get Maine and Nebraska out of the way when I'm doing these videos because they're the two split vote states. I've made an argument, by the way, that uh, Virginia and maybe some other states as well should become sp electoral split vote states. If you want to see why I think so, you can click the card, which is hopefully appearing up in this corner up somewhere above me right now. If not, it'll be uh, linked in the end card at the end of the video. and You can watch my explanation on that. It's a short about eight minute episode. Uh, so Maine as a whole is extremely interesting. Um, with the things looking, things I say, the court case, the vice presidential pick wasn't bad. Um, and with the failed assassination attempt on Trump, I almost want to give Maine to Trump. He came surprisingly close against Hillary, and I think these margins we're going to see are much are be much closer to his margins against Hillary than in 2020. Um, he might even improve on 2016 margins in some states. So, I'm going to say Maine State as a whole. I don't want to get too overly ambitious here. I've told you before we like to play things conservative, no pun intended. We just like to play things conservative in that we don't want we want to um, when in doubt, uh, go with you know like historical trends. Proceed with caution. So I'm going to say Maine's state as a whole is tilt Democrat. But it's extremely close, and Trump could win the state as a whole if this rural second congressional district, the largest in the nation, goes to Trump by 20 or better, and that first district goes to Trump by or goes to Biden by only you know seven, eight points or less. Then yeah, you could see um, you could see the state go to Trump. Uh, let's stick with up here in the Northeast with New Hampshire. Uh, New Hampshire is very interesting. Um, up until very recently, I would have said Biden has a very good chance of winning it again, and he might very well still, but I'll be honest, after the assassina failed assassination attempt, I really think it's going to madden a lot of people. I don't see if, this is all assuming Biden's still the nominee, I just don't see them getting out the vote like they did in 2020. They don't have COVID as an excuse. I think it's going to be much closer to 2016 margins when Trump, when Trump lost New Hampshire, but I think it was like 8,000 votes or something. If it was at 4,000, it was a really close race. Trump and Hillary in New Hampshire. I'm going to right now give New Hampshire to Donald Trump as a tilt red state. That's 1 to 1.5%, uh, I believe I said. Yeah. So I think you'd see it very close. We're probably talking... Um, Probably talking 0 0.2, 0 0.3%, 0 0.4, maybe half a percent, but I absolutely think Trump can win. I'm not super confident that he will, but right now, if the national environment does not get better for Dems, it's going to be a bad year for them presidentially, uh, in the Senate, and probably in the House as well. So, just like that, uh, New Hampshire tilt red, and that's already a big advantage. Uh, Minnesota is a state I don't have any polling pulled up for. Uh, I do believe Biden's still going to fare reasonably well, um, although 
I say reasonably well. Maybe not compared to historically. I think he'll wear... Re- can't speak. Fair reasonably well in that I believe he will win it, but I don't think he's going to win it by much. Minnesota, in my book, is going to be a tilt Democrat state, but not by much. Could this finally be the first presidential year election since is it 1972, I believe, that Minnesota's voted for a Republican? Not even in the wave year of 1984 could they elect Ronald Reagan. They went with Walter Mondale, them in D.C. So um, could this finally be the year it flips? I don't know. I'm going to say right now, based on such strong historical data, that um, Minnesota does stay with the Democrats, but barely. We're probably talking probably less than 1.5%, which would put it in tilt. So Nebraska's second congressional district, um, it is a... Democrat tilting district, I would say. Trump won in 2016 by, I think, four. Lost in 2020 by seven. 2020 was such a horribly bad year, though, nationally for Republicans, for Trump specifically. Again, you had the uh, potential election problems, though probably not in Nebraska. You had the uh, you know the widespread mail-in voting, absentee voting, and all that. And I think that Nebraska's second congressional district, I did not mean to do that, my apologies, I think it's going to tilt back to Republicans. I think Trump will pick up an extra electoral vote there. Could be wrong, but I think that's how it's going to go. Uh, let's look at Colorado. Colorado, again, no polling pulled up for these yet. These aren't swing states per se. I think Colorado, Biden's, I believe, 10 or 12-point margin is going to wane drastically from where it was in 2020, and I think he's going to win it if we're saying lean, again, is 1.6 to 4%. I think we're going to say likely Colorado goes to the Dems, but I think it's going to be on the very low side of likely, probably 4.1 to 5 points is what we're looking at in Colorado. Um, did I, I did do that correctly. Okay, so New Mexico kind of follows the same trend as Colorado, except it seems to be, emphasis on seems to be, trending more to the right than Colorado. It did so in 2020, and uh, or it didn't trend as far left, I guess, in 2020. And uh, the demographics there are kind of good for the Republicans right now, or better than they have been historically. I do think Biden's going to win New Mexico, but I don't think it's going to be by a likely margin. I think we're going to see that 1.5 or 1.6 to, um, and I'm forgetting what it was, yeah, 1.6 to 4% margin. And so I'm going to put New Mexico down as tilt, or excuse me, lean Democrat. Okay, almost done with our swing state, or our non swing states. Virginia, my home state of Virginia, for a long time I've been convinced that Biden's going to win, probably around the four to five point range. Recently, we're seeing polling that shows it tied. I know the pro-Biden sentiment isn't super strong here from what I'm seeing. This is my home state, in case you did not know. Um, I think that Virginia is still going to vote for Biden. I'm not super optimistic about it uh, ever in the near future, uh, bucking its Democrat ways, but I think it's going to be close. Virginia goes from lean, which I've had it in consistently lean or likely, depending on the video, to a tilt Biden state. Uh, it could very well be within 1.5%. Um, I could definitely see it being on the low side of lean, maybe one5 to 2%, but for the purposes of this video, though I usually try to guess conservatively, I think we're going to say right now Virginia is only a tilt Biden state. Okay, let's move on here. Rather than just doing the typical Rust Belt, then the Sun Belt, throwing North Carolina in there, we're going to kind of jump around here just to keep things interesting. Let's start in the great state of Georgia, the Peach State. Uh, Right here in Georgia, we have, per 538's polling average, Trump leading by 4.5. That lead is held very steady, as you see. It's ebbed and flow, but it's rarely dropped below 5%. That's actually one of the lower ones it's been, uh, tallies since about April, and the most recent one from Insider Advantage, 800 Likelies with a TV station out of Atlanta, shows Trump up 10 over Harris. This feeds back into that video I was uh, telling you about, or I was going through the other day when I was breaking down the different Democrat candidates, who could they get to replace Biden, I said I thought Kamala would actually be a weaker candidate. This poll seems to confirm that, as Trump leads Biden by 3, leads Kamala, though, by um, 10. So uh, Redfield and Wilton's strategy, I'd be interested to see just because I'm assuming they factor in RFK. They do. He gets 6%. Uh, nothing for Chase Oliver. Cornell West does not appear. Jill Stein gets 1%. So I do believe that, uh, yes, Georgia is going to definitely go for Trump. It's going to flip back. If it ever did flip in 2020, just saying. 
legitimately. Um, but that's neither here nor there. So I believe Georgia is going to, that's my notes, flip back to Trump. And at this point, I believe Georgia is going to be, as I click blue again, I think Georgia is going to be a likely Trump state. I don't think it's going to be nine points or better, but could I see it being within that, um, what did I say? Yeah, 4.1 to 8.9%. Likely is pretty expansive. That's the biggest category. Absolutely. I think we're probably looking at a six or seven point win in Georgia for Trump. North Carolina, meanwhile, um, also not really considered a swing state in terms of the core swing states, but definitely it's been closer. Trump won it by less than two points in 2020. Look at this. They have consistently polled ahead of Georgia. So more Republicanly, I don't say conservatively. I'll use I like inventing terms on the show, so I'll say Republicanly. Consistently, they lead um, Georgia. They're even more Republican than Georgia. Robert F. Kennedy over eight percent the whole time, pretty much, looking pretty strong there. He got to double digits one time. Um, I believe it'll be going to be very interesting to see if a, the, Trump gets a polling bump after the assassination uh, attempt. I should say. So right now he's up six point uh six point three, excuse me, not six point one. No, it went back down. Okay, six point one. So he's up six point one in North Carolina. I'm not convinced it's gonna be that much. That puts us at fifty-three to forty six nine. And I'm not convinced it's gonna be that much, but with likely being four point one to eight point nine, I believe North Carolina has to go down as a likely Trump state as well. I'm not exactly sure where it's gonna be in there, but if Trump wins it by less than 4.1, I'd be pretty surprised. Four points or less would not be a great showing, honestly, for Trump in North Carolina. I think it's going to flip back. Okay, where do we go next? Let's go next to, let's just keep moving up the eastern seaboard. We'll go to Pennsylvania next. How about that? Pennsylvania, arguably the biggest uh, prize to be won this year. 19 electoral votes, huge swing state. Trump has consistently led Biden. You see it dipped down there to 0.3% in its low, but he's consistently led Biden, and recently his lead has expanded. March it was doing pretty well, got pretty uh, tight there for a bit, and now his lead's expanded. He's up to 2.6%. Kennedy polling at 8.1%, pretty consistent nationwide. Uh, you get New York Times and Siena College. They did a bunch of different polls, it appears. Um, so you've got a bunch of different results here from them, actually. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the differences are in them. I haven't studied them that intently, but it is interesting. I see some, we have some difference between registered and likely, as I'm guessing these are just the same questions to different groups of people split up and smaller. You do have, uh, the questions of Kamala Harris versus Trump and Biden versus Trump, obviously. Half of these are Harris, half of them are Biden or so. And Trump, I mean, you see four, three, three, two, two, one, two, one. I mean, he just leads by a lot. Um, you have Trump up in morning consult, sponsored by Bloomberg, 51 to 44. If he's cracking 50 in Pennsylvania in these polling, that's just bad for Dems. This Dem poll, or Dem sponsored poll from Emerson College, plus five for Trump. Pennsylvania, at this point, I think Biden greatly overperformed Pennsylvania in 2020. There were certainly some uh, shenanigans there, as well as I've covered in previous videos. I'm not going to go over my whole stance on that again. Uh, but... I believe Pennsylvania is going to go back for Trump, and at this point, I think it's going to go to him by more than one and a half points. Pennsylvania, I believe, has been tilt in both of my videos so far, electoral map predictions, presidentially, that is. Uh, I believe in this one, Pennsylvania is going to go down as a lean Trump state. We're probably looking at 1.6. Yeah, to four points, I'm going to guess uh, we're looking at about a three-point win here for Trump, which would be huge for him. Just like that, he crosses the threshold to 270. Oh, it shows you right here, if Biden could hold on to, we'll just do this here for example, if Biden could hold on to uh, New Hampshire and Nebraska, that put hold Trump right at 270, not that it really matters, but it is an interesting little point there. Um, Biden would need to hold in the state of Maine as well. So at this point, we're like, man, how tr much is Trump going to win by? Because we've got four states to go. If Biden sweeps these, it's still not going to be good. Uh, moving on to Wisconsin. How about Wisconsin? Let's do that next. Wisconsin, Trump's actually polling not as well as I would expect compared to Pennsylvania. He's polling ahead at 1.2. He is, again, pretty consistently led. Biden's taken the lead a couple times. Uh, right here, it was very close, but yeah, right there, Biden took the lead. Uh, but recently, Trump's expanded that lead a little bit. 
Wisconsin's going to be a very close state, it would appear. It doesn't seem like uh, either candidate is making a whole lot of traction there. That obviously things are going to start changing as we get more and more ad buys and more campaigning heating up as we get towards September, October. This being July 16th today. Um, and it's, yeah, I told you the 16th. <laughs> But I believe Trump is going to win Wisconsin. It'd be very weird for him to win Pennsylvania and not win Wisconsin. It'd be even weirder for Wisconsin to vote to the left of Pennsylvania. But I do believe that what we're currently seeing indicates that Trump wins Wisconsin. It's 10 electoral votes, but only by a tilt margin. We're going to give him a tilt win, so between 0.1 and 1.5%. Moving on, let's go to, you know what, we're not going to go to air to uh michigan we're gonna jump down to arizona how about that arizona trump is doing much much better than he was uh back in the day in 2020 he's just performing so far ahead of everywhere he was in the polls in 2020 i believe nationally at this time in 2020 biden led by about eight trump leads by two to three depending on who you who you consult so i mean that's that's a 10 to 11 point swing which is just crazy in the polling and trump historically underperforms the polling we'll see if that continues but anyway arizona um trump leads by 4.2 to me that actually seems just about right i think he's going to perform much better i think he's going to win the state the more interesting race in arizona honestly and i may be making a full video about this soon rather than just uh another senate map prediction because i just did one of those a couple weeks ago but I might be making a full video soon breaking down Carrie Lake and Ruben Gallego's race because the most recent poll from that race shows the two tied, and it seems like Carrie Lake, who was kind of written off early, is sort of coming back. So we're going to see what happens in that Senate race. As for the presidential race, I think Trump wins it. And if we're looking here, could he win, by, could he win it by more than 4%? Yes, but again, being conservative, I think we're looking at a 3 to 4% win here for him. So I believe we're going to give Arizona to Trump by a lean margin, a healthy little lean margin. Okay, let's go to Michigan next. Michigan's where Biden is probably performing the best, where he should be performing the best out of these probably. Uh, you see 8.7 for Kennedy. Trump leads by just 0.6 in the polls. Biden 41.6. So here's the deal. If it was just me weighing the favorables and my opinion and the polls and all that, um and the uh, the demographic breakdown and all that, I would say, and you look at the polling here, how, how scattered it's been. I'd say Michigan leans or tilts Democrat. However, it's been a very long time since Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania did not be, uh, vote together. The so-called blue wall uh, was broken by Trump in 2016. All three flipped, then all three flipped back in 2020. They vote very similarly. However, because of that, if Wisconsin, Pennsylvania flip, it's likely Michigan flips, though I'm not convinced. Uh, I would be tempted to say Michigan is tilt uh, Democrat, but because of um, those two conflicting things, I'm really not sure. So Michigan is going to actually remain a toss-up in my uh, prediction. Last state we're going to go to, the great state of Nevada, the allegedly great state, the silver state, not silver and gold, Burl Ives. So here is maybe Trump's most impressive lead. He's consistently led uh, Biden by four points or better for a long time. And the polling, Nevada is just not really changing um, for Biden. It's just not getting better. Kennedy polls almost 9%. I think that's going to hurt Biden. And uh, yeah, I mean, you see there, Trump 43-3, Biden 38-7, Biden's below 40, which is just not good at all. Nevada's a state, I've said before, I've been predicting to flip to the GOP for a long time. Won the governor election in 2022, came close to winning that Senate election. Here, I'm going to give it to the GOP, to Trump, by a lean margin. That would be 1.6 to 4%. I'm going to say Trump flipped the state, wins it by about 2.5 or so points, similar around the similar margin to where Biden won it in 2020 and Hillary in 2016. So there you go. Trump cracks 300 electoral votes. It's crazy. Um, at this point, I think Trump's going to do very well because of the failed assassination attempt. He's got a lot of good commercials he can run now. As far as Biden goes, I don't know that the Dems can replace him at this point. As chaotic as this election cycle has been, thanks in large part to them, the failed assassination attempts, uh, the, recent, uh, the recent news of the vice presidency is kind of just, you know, or the vice president, that's kind of added a little additional news. You have Trump's court cases, so 
It's just been so chaotic. I'm not sure replacing Biden would help them at this point. So we'll see. But right now, I think Trump versus Biden head to head. That's my map. 302 for Trump, 221 for Biden. Let me know what you think in the comments below. In the words of our great president, look here, Jack. I'll challenge you to push-ups, but that's neither here nor there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and help us reach more people with our conservative message.